Hey, do you happen to have a bunch of battery packs lying around? Did you know something amazing? You can actually bring them all back to life. I'll show you how, but you'll need three things. A bunch of dead or non-working battery packs, a super cheap spot welder, and most importantly, a clear understanding of how valuable your life is. Warning, disturbing images may cause distress to some viewers. But what really happened? Do you know what this is? It's a battery pack, or as many call it, the drill battery. At first glance, it seems harmless, almost harmless. As long as you're using it to power your drill or any other power tool, you're all good. Unless, of course, you plan on drilling underwater. From the outside, these batteries don't seem dangerous, because inside this plastic shell, you won't find regular old batteries like the ones we use to power talking dolls. No, inside are high-risk, high-power cells. I'm talking about these. Lithium-ion batteries, which have revolutionized the concept of the battery. Thanks to this technology, we can power e-bikes, drones, power banks, smartphones, even vibrating microphones, and yes, even cars. Not to mention the fact that many people use them to smoke. Have you ever heard of thermal runaway? Thermal runaway is a chain reaction, a chemical process that generates even more heat when a battery is damaged, overcharged or exposed to high temperatures. This can lead to a fire or even an explosion without any warning and that's exactly what happened to Marco, an Italian YouTuber. Sometimes these batteries are silent, meaning they give you a quiet warning before they explode. If you're lucky, like in this case, Smoke is already a clear warning sign that should never be ignored, because it means you still have time to act before it turns into a fire or explosion. Either move away or get the battery outside as quickly as possible. Of course that doesn't mean throwing it out your neighbor's window. Yeah. Now we've understood just how dangerous these batteries can be. What matters is that the message came through. Let's move on. But what are we going to see in this video? In this video, I'm going to show you how I rebuilt a battery pack using this, a spot welder I showed in an old video of mine, but careful. Don't try what you're about to see unless you have experience and know what you're doing. And above all, the most important question is this. Is it really necessary to make this modification? Si e no. Alright, let me show you how I did it, in my own way. By the end of the video we'll understand when it makes sense to perform this modification and when it doesn't. Enjoy the video. Now, here are my batteries. I imagine many of you are in the same situation, owning a large number of drill batteries, often of different types, many of which no longer charge or have lost significant capacity. Even batteries have their own life cycle, and they don't necessarily need to be used to wear out. Sometimes, just sitting idle is enough. Over the years, they may simply lose efficiency. Many people rely on a test to check if the battery is charged or not, but this doesn't guarantee that the battery still holds its original capacity. It doesn't tell us how much actual charge the battery can still store. For example, this one should be charged, but in reality it's like Z. It's dead. That's what gave me the idea for this video. I was at the supermarket when I came across this. A Parkside charger and battery combo on sale for just 19 euros. Ironically, it cost me less to buy this full kit than to get four individual replacement cells. Yeah, I know. All the hardcore Parkside fans are probably gonna hate me for what I'm about to do next. First, let's check if it's charged. It seems like it is, but I don't trust it. I want to top it up completely. In fact, it didn't reach full charge. It had only been charging for about 10 minutes. Now, using my gargantuan multimeter, I'll check the output voltage. Perfect, 20.37 volts. Fortunately, this type of battery doesn't use Torx screws or other weird types, just regular Phillips head screws. Nice and simple. Here's the battery pack opened up. At first glance, it actually looks like replacing the cells might be pretty straightforward. Watch out for the small board that monitors the battery voltage. It looks like it's been used as a public restroom by some kind of dust mine. Anyway, what's this green board? That's the BMS, the Battery Management System. Its job is to handle both charging and discharging. Basically, it stops the batteries from discharging below a critical threshold, and it also regulates current flow smartly to protect the entire pack amongst. They even used a transparent gel to protect the main circuit from moisture and outside elements. As you can see, the batteries are spot welded. And this is the spring from the locking mechanism. This little piece you're seeing now is a thermal protection sensor. 
it protects the battery in case of overheating, and in the worst case, it can prevent an explosion caused by high temperatures. Now that we've covered how dangerous these batteries are, let's do something incredibly stupid, something completely pointless, and most importantly, Here's what you need to know. The batteries are connected in series. Otherwise, how would we get such a high voltage if each cell only gives 3.7 volts? Let's now look at how to take these batteries apart. They're spot welded using an electrode welder onto these nickel strips. But first, you'll need the right material. Nickel. I have a few rows here, but some are too thin. 0 0.12, 0 0.15 millimeters. This one is just right. 0 0.2 millimeters thick and the perfect height too. Now let me teach you something simple, but important. Always take a photo before disassembling anything. Why? Because it helps you remember how everything looked in the beginning. In this case, we want to remember how the batteries were originally connected. Take photos from different angles. That way, you won't mess up and get close to the details. Because once you open it up, you can't just press undo like in software. Anyway, I'm cutting a strip of nickel now. And for those already thinking ahead, make sure it's the same size as the original one. Alright, listen carefully, there are two ways to go, the longer one, and also the more dangerous, not to mention the most difficult. That's removing the nickel strips from the batteries, trying to preserve them because we might reuse them. Unfortunately, this method takes a lot of patience and skill, and it's also quite risky since you're working on the entire battery pack. And yes, there's a real risk of explosion, did you hear that? On top of yelling a mix of Bible characters and farm animals, Just to get this result? Is it worth it? Not to me. It makes no sense at all. The nickel strip was so damaged, it barely has enough surface for a new weld. Now let's try my method. I'm not saying it's better, but this is how I do it. Use pliers to cut only the part of the nickel strip that connects to the weld. That way, the batteries come off more easily and you avoid taking unnecessary risks. I mean, the batteries are going in the trash anyway, right? Well. Not in this case because they're new, but it's just an example. Did you see how quick that was? Now that the batteries are free from the strips, this one won't come off easily because of the silicone we saw earlier, but a little scraping with a screwdriver and it'll come off too. The prep phase is almost done. We just need to flatten the cut nickel tabs with pliers. Since we'll be welding onto other strips, the two surfaces need to be perfectly flush. All right, here we go. Let's grab the small spot welder and see what we can do. You've already seen it in one of my previous videos where I reviewed some electronic gear, so I'd say, let's get started. I'll restore the cells I removed, starting with the leftover pieces of nickel. In many cases, all you need is a pair of tweezers. Try rolling the small tab to help it come off, especially when it can't be fully detached. Don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to do it. But first, a warning. Never mix batteries with different capacities, because the one with the lowest capacity will be the one that dictates the behavior of the entire pack. More importantly, the batteries must all have the same voltage. It's good practice to use a large clamp to press them together firmly. Of course, I'm joking. You only need a light squeeze. The rubber will handle the grip without damaging the battery casing at all. For the tabs that couldn't be removed, we can take care of them with this method. I used a pair of tweezers as a stop to better control the movement of the small rotary tool. You only want to remove the excess material, not part of the battery. So you'll need steady hands to grind off just the remaining bit of the nickel tab. If necessary, repeat the same process on the other side. And I can't stress this enough. Keep it super clean. The surface must be completely free of any debris. That's how you know the job was done properly. Now I'll pair up two batteries just to get the correct spacing for the nickel strip that will connect the first two cells in series. See? That's why the photos were important. It only takes a second to accidentally short the batteries. Before doing this modification, I like to test how the weld points turn out on two pieces of nickel strip. What really matters is that the contact is perfect. There should be no air between the surfaces, and the welding tips should be well-rounded and not worn down. As you can see, the weld points turned out really well. Now, do you remember why I said the nickel strips need to be perfectly aligned? Watch what happens when I try to weld in this spot where the strip wasn't sitting flush. The weld points basically turned into two holes.
Now I'm going to make the welds, trying to bond not just the nickel strip, but also the battery itself. Don't get distracted. I know you're staring at my thumb, but you should be watching the welds, even if you can't see a damn thing. It's always fun when you realize while editing the video what was actually happening during the shoot. The welds didn't come out like the original spot points, but they're still very solid. Now I'm moving on to weld the other battery group. While the last one is a single cell, I'll need to cut a small piece of nickel strip for that. The first side is done, now let's move to the other one. But ideally you'd want to make omega shaped strips, so only one part touches the battery terminal. Now I'm welding this side as well. In the end, it took me about an hour to complete everything. Let's stay optimistic. Unfortunately guys, to get truly professional welds, you need a professional spot welder. This one works fine, but only for small jobs. I have to say, it performed reasonably well for what it costs, and it allowed me to restore a battery pack. Sure, I replaced good batteries and put the same ones back in, but that was just to show you how a battery pack regeneration is done. The procedure for replacing 18,650 cells is the same. However, not all battery packs are built the same way. This one, for example, is very easy to work on. I specifically chose a Parkside model because it's one of the most popular and widely used. And with that, we've reached the end of this particular video. Once the battery pack is fully assembled, the job is done. Alright, here we are again, and we've reached the end of this video. Remember what I said at the beginning? Is it worth doing this kind of repair or not? Well, first of all, if we're talking about saving money, it's really not worth it. Batteries aren't easy to find and when you do, they often cost more than just buying a brand new battery pack. So in that case, it makes more sense to buy a new one. It's safer, quicker and saves you time. But then there's a second case. Let's say you have a drill that belonged to your grandfather. Or maybe your father or a close friend gave it to you. And the original battery pack is no longer available. In that case, if you want to give that tool a second life, then yes, this kind of modification is absolutely worth it. Before we wrap up guys, if you enjoy this kind of content, I've built hundreds of DIY projects over the years and I've also created several courses on electronics and soldering. What do you think? Should I bring back some of my old videos, those that only had background music, but this time using this new English spoken format? Let me know in the comments, because trust me, there are a lot of them. Thanks a lot for watching, subscribe if you're into electronics, woodworking or DIY, and I'll see you in the next one.